Now we will have a second session. The second session is to amplify, as we know that uh, Prof. Puff taught us that there is no shortcut. So this is the second webinar session is to amplify our paper quality with regards to the econometric skills, methodology, and analysis. For the one of the recent method, and this is common for finance and economic, which is uh, non-linear regression and also threshold approach. So for the second webinar session, let me introduce our distinguished speaker, Professor Lo Xiong Ho from the School of Business and Economics of University Putra Malaysia. He holds a PhD degree from uh, in the University of Leicester, United Kingdom. He was a visiting scholar at the Division of Economics, Nanyang Technological University, and the Department of Economics, University of California. His research interests are in the field of financial economic, applied economic, mostly with empirical applications using panel data and time series analysis. He has published more than 125 articles, wow, in the free journal cited in Scopus, and 50 articles are cited in Web of Science. Uh, publication uh, including Journal of Banking and Finance, which is uh, the highly respected journal in finance, and also Journal of Development Economy, Economic Modeling, and also uh, Economic System. Those journals are well-respected journals in finance and economic, which is quite not easy to publish there. And currently, he is the editor-in-chief for the International Journal of Economics and Management, Satin Scopus, and also editorial board member, Economic System, and associate editor, Emerging Market Finance and Trade. Finally, he has conducted more than 100 quantitative analysis workshop and publication workshop in Malaysia, as well as in Indonesia. And today, he will talk about one of the famous methods, as I mentioned before, the threshold approach and nonlinear approach. Without further ado, please welcome Prof. Lau. Prof. Lau, you have 75 minutes for your presentation and 45 minutes for Q&A. For those who wants to ask a question, please drop your question in the Q&A box and later I will read it. So, Prof. Lau, the floor is yours. All right, uh, thank you, uh, yeah, Usman, for your kind introduction. Yeah, thank you, faculty of... Uh, Economy and business for having me in this uh, uh, webinar. So I would like to share my uh, screen. So I hope everybody can can see the, the my slide. Yeah. So the the topic is uh, the nonlinear and the threshold regression analysis because uh, I sent a few uh, topic to the the you know, the management and they pick this uh, nonlinear and the threshold regression. So yeah, I think uh, just now the Prof. Uh, Robert has uh, explained the, the publication, uh, research and publication uh, process. And then uh, we need to read a lot of the article, identify the gap, and also the literature review. And then after that, we keep writing. And then, uh, of course, we need to identify the right method, the model from the theory, theory background, and also the, the estimation technique. Then we need to have the robust check yeah, to ensure the result uh, robust. Then we uh, report the result, discuss the result, and present in the, if have the opportunity, then we can present in the good conference, uh, have the well-known keynote speaker. And also we write the, the paper, improve the paper after getting the, the comment from the, you know, the, the participant. We can uh, cite their name, let's say the chair person is a well-known uh, professor, comment your paper, then we can thank the, the chair, chairman as an acknowledgement in uh, our paper. Then we can submit from the, you know, the, to the journal that we have targeted. So what I want to highlight here is the methodology part, yeah, the empirical model, the estimation technique, and also the, the the more recent technique that we can apply to to enhance our paper quality so that the chances to accept it, you know, to get accepted will be higher. Yeah. So this is the preview or outline. So I will share uh, 
the nonlinear quadratic function, the static panel threshold, the cross section and the time series threshold, and the dynamic panel threshold. Yeah, I think the recent one is by this one. So it's Shin and so the the way how you can apply is published in the state journal. So you can uh, uh, download the paper and you have the state program, then you can apply the the technique see, so this is more uh, recent compared to the grammar 2013. So uh, the learning goal is to elaborate uh, the, the, con the concept of the threshold model, formulate static and the dynamic threshold model, and identify the correct threshold uh, method in estimating the data set. Uh, because due to the time constraint, I, I, I can uh, uh, show the, the hand-on session, yeah. So therefore, I will show you the, the the code so that you can you can apply based on the the data or other software. They have the the explanation how we can apply this uh, technique, all right? So some uh, specific question, for example, how the the threshold concept can be used in the applied banking economic and finance research so yeah we want to know the, the threshold uh, concept the method and how to use the static and the dynamic threshold uh, method yeah we have the two one is static one is a dynamic where the dynamic mean that the dependent is uh, depend on the past information yeah so therefore we need to consider the past, in past information because it will affect our present or current uh, dependent variable and then how the, to identify the threshold or turning point of x in the relationship between x and y so we want to see the the, the changes or the turning point tipping point of x you know how they can affect the y whether it's below x below this uh, threshold level or above the threshold level then the x will have any significant impact on the y and how to detect the threshold or turning point of z or z here mean we have three variable so mean that the relationship between x and y depend on the the z the z yeah so the z is the moderator so in the i think in finance or accounting or management they use this as a moderator where the x and why depend on whether the z is high or low but in economic uh, we use the interaction uh, effect yeah so a little bit uh, different here and then how to find the optimum value of certain variable by the way i think the threshold is not mm, yeah it's the mean for the optimum value because we need to uh, know that this one is to see the turning point which is the turning point split the sample then we can analyze the sub sample yeah so sometimes they say can find the optimum point is depend on our topic yeah some topic can use the threshold to determine our turning point all right so yeah we focus on the static panel threshold by hansen 1999 yeah, this is the panel static uh, model. Then we move to the Hansen 2000. Yeah, so this one is a cross session data and also can apply in the time series um, data. And then, uh, of course, when we have more data, panel data, then the, the literature move to the panel threshold model. So the first one is developed by Kramer. Yeah, it's a PhD student in Germany, and then the So and Shin, yeah, the, the Korean uh, scholar. Yeah, they propose another uh, dynamic panel threshold, and then the way how we can apply is explained by this uh, Stata journal in published in the two thousand nineteen. Yeah, so the modeling uh, strategy for this threshold allow the role of the threshold variable to differ depending on whether the variable is below or above some unknown level of the threshold because why because the threshold can detect the unknown level of the threshold so we do not know where is the 
the turning point, but the threshold method they can identify. Compared to we use the quadratic, mean that we already uh, assume that they have the turning point, right? So therefore, it's important to test the linearity or non-linearity in our data set. So yeah, I, I talk about a little bit the quadratic model. So to search for the turning point using this uh, square term, uh, when you have the, the quad quadratic model, let's say the x, x squared, as a limitation, because why? Because it's imposed and a priori a restriction that the effect of x on y monotonically and uh, symmetrically increase and decrease with the level of x. Yeah, so we we just assume that it's already uh, have the turning point, but we haven't checked. We just uh, assume then I don't think it's a uh, it's appropriate. Uh, yeah. So however, it may also be a certain level of x has to be achieved first before the x can have the, any impact on the y. So using the square term tend to have the potential multi-collinearity or collinearity problem according to the Narayan and Narayan, a paper that they published in the 2010. Yeah? So they have this uh, multi-collinearity problem because we take the x and the x squared. Yeah? So uh, you can see these two uh, diagram, the above level and the square x and x squared must significant in order to have the uh, non-linear u-shape or inverted u-shape. Eh? Yeah, if I say either one significant, the other term not significant, for example, the x significant, but the x squared not significant, then this one is a linear relationship, not the non-linear u-shape. Also for the inverted as well, both x and x squared they have to uh, significant, yeah? both are significant to have the inverted U-shape relationship. If let's say X squared significant, but X is not uh, significant, then we cannot conclude that they have the inverted uh, U-shape. Yeah? So you need to have both X and X squared significant, at, let's say 5% level, then we can conclude that, okay, the relationship between the y and x they have the u shape or the inverted u shape yeah mm. so yeah example i think the 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 first example they look at this uh u shape or inverted u shape here is based on this uh east kc or environmental uh coarseness curve yeah so you can see the the level of environmental uh regression here and then we have this, uh, the X uh, horizontal, uh, and this is GDP per capita. So I mean, initially you can see that pre-industrial uh, economy, GDP per capita increase. Then to a certain point, the turning point is this here. The turning point is the industrial economy here. It's a turning point. After that, we can slow down our GDP per capita in the post-industrial we, we move more to the service sector, yeah, based economy or knowledge based economy. But now we have the digital economy, right? So, yeah, it's a uh, based on this uh, EKC. So, EKC they use the square term, yeah, the square term to look at this uh, non linearity. So, yeah, a paper that, uh, yeah, from the PhD um, student at the university here published that. EKC, yeah, hypothesis exists, evident from the dynamic panel threshold. So because uh, we have the coursework to, to teach the PhD uh, students so they know how to apply. So they try to look at this uh, issue. And the finding indicate that using the square term tend to overestimate the turning point. Yeah, I mean, the U shape, the highest point, tend to overestimate. Yeah. So therefore, it's not so accurate to use the uh, square term as a model to modeling this uh, EKC. So you can see the graph here. This is the U shape, uh, the black color line and the curved shape dot line. So the curved shape is the threshold 
because they you have the curved shape, then they be went into two sub sample. But the U shaped one is the based on the quadratic model. Yeah. So they can be divide into two regime. So you can see the, the curved shape, the, the dot line, the red color. The turning point is just uh, maybe uh, uh, 63, but the U shape based on the the square term, the minimum point is about 70. Yeah? So mean that uh, using the the square term, they tend to overestimate the, the, the turning point here. So therefore, we need to uh, compare whether we overestimate the turning point, yes or no, yeah, to ensure that this turning point is not overestimate. So for example, this is the scatter plot of the data. So we have the use the, the threshold to split the sample. Let's say this is the first sample split. Then we analyze, yeah, the first sample split, we analyze this part. Then we can move to the, the on your right hand side, whether that is a second sample split, all right? Not only the first sample, but we can move to the, to detect or to test for the second uh, sample split. So is there another sample split after the first sample split? So we can test the second uh, sample split and also the third sample split whether uh, is significant or not uh, significant uh, based on the test, right? Okay, so we look at the, yeah. So the linearity, again, the non-specific, non-linear alternative. So we want, we want to start uh, to test this uh, linear or non-linear of course there are a, a few methods or tests we can apply and i think most of the literature in this um in our threshold article or test for the non-linear they use this uh, bds test uh, linearity test because maybe this test is uh, available in the eu software yeah so for testing again a variety of possible deviation from independent including linear dependent, non-linear dependent, and also the white test and other tests, yeah. Of course, we have the this uh, say test as well, and also the Ramsey reset test also we can apply to consider. So using more than one test is better rather than using just one to detect this non-linearity. Start from the BDS test, then we can uh, complement or with other tests. All right. Then okay, the, the other test I think is quite useful. It's a Lean and Run uh, two thousand. This is U test. Is a uh, yeah. The command is available in the Stata uh, program. The U test provide the exact test of the presence of the U shape or inverse U shape re relationship on an interval. So this U test is used after our estimation. Let's say you estimate the, the X and X square, then you perform the U test, then they can tell you whether the relationship between the X and Y is a linear on the non-linear or is a U shape or inverted U shape. Yeah. So the estimation must contain the level of the Exponentary variable, example x, and also the non-linear term, let's say the x squared, yeah, the quad quadratic term. So then, uh, yeah, then this U test will determine which of these the two is used and report the test result from the test. Then we can see our hypothesis whether we should use the linear or non-linear or U shape or non. Or, or inverted U shape uh, relation here. So this is the references. So the the command is available in the state. Time. So you can download the command. Then you can apply. For example, after you estimate the x and x square in your model, then you can perform the U test. After you get the get, getting the result, then use the command U test. Of course, we need, we need to install the SSC install is the how to install the new command. Sometimes we need to use find it if let's say the SSC install is not work, right? 
it's not working, it's not able to find the command, then we need to use find it. Example, you can see the next slide. So I uh, estimate the the what the regression example. Then my call, the regression have the x and x square. So I just put the u test x and x square. Yeah? So they have the extreme point. The extreme point is just the you know the dy dx equal to zero. Then you can find the what is the x value. Yeah? So actually this is the turning point. Yeah, the turning point for the the x on the horizontal axis, and they have the hypothesis now is the monotone or inverse U shape, and the alternative is a U shape. Huh? Yeah, so you can see the overall test below there. The p value, the p value is less than zero point zero five. If let's say less than zero point zero five, then we can reject the hypothesis now. Conclude the Hypothesis alternative, which is U shape. Yeah. So, mean that we can reject the now, conclude that we have the U shape relationship between the X and the Y, yeah, the dependent, whatever. Yeah, so this is the example we can apply to detect. Yeah, so we have the U shape and also the inverse or inverted U shape or monotone here. So what is monotone here? Monotone, for example, entirely uh, non-increasing or entirely uh, non-decreasing. For example, you can see here, uh, this is a positive, um, it's a negative uh, curve. It decreases, but after that, they become uh, flat. Then they have the downward uh, sloping again, and then this is a positive increase, but they have the flat. Uh, uh, stable here, and then after the, they move up again. Yeah, so this is called the the monotone, right? Okay, the 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 curve is look like this, right? Okay, so I will move to the more important is the, the threshold method. Yeah, of course we need to the the so we have the I will start with the static panel first. But I don't think I will highlight more. I will move more to the dynamic because I believe now uh, most of our model is a dynamic model okay you use the GMM to estimate therefore because we have the lag dependent wherever so the Hansen 1999 is a static threshold uh, model so the using the panel data not the cross section or time series but it's a panel data threshold but the model is a static model so the panel threshold auto regression model developed by Hansen yeah, is based on the static framework. Example, you can see the optimum of the capital structure, whether the firm want to go for that, you know, the how many percentage of the debt we want to apply in the company example, the model take the following form. Alright, so we can have the V here as the dependent. And then we have two equations here. The first one above is the less than the you know the the threshold, and then the second equation is greater than the threshold. B defer to the debt, yeah, defer to the company debt, okay, or the firm debt. Then this H here is the control variable. Then of course, not only D the debt can be the threshold variable, but also the, we can, we can include in the model as well. Right, so we have the theta, we have the three control variable. So, what are the variables show in the next slide? So, the V is the firm value, this is measured by the return on equity, or we can use the the turbin Q or return on asset. And the D is a debt ratio, is a explanatory variable, and also the threshold variable. Yeah, no need. Yeah, actually, the threshold variable you can use it as a threshold but at the same time we can include in the model specification and there are three control variables so we have the three control variables here and then the error term is the feed effect that represents the heterogeneity of the firm under different operating uh, condition so this is the the variable that 
defined, then the beta 1 is a threshold coefficient when the threshold value is lower than this uh, depth threshold. And the beta 2 is a threshold coefficient when the threshold value is higher than the, the depth threshold. Yeah? So the error are uh, assumed to be ID means zero and the variant constant. The I represent the different firm. Yeah? T, of course, is the time. So we have the panel, therefore we have the IT to dimension, yeah. So Hansen 1999, they used this you know, simulation likelihood uh, ratio to test for the asymptotic uh, distribution of the threshold estimate. So they use the two station ordinary least square method and minimize the sum of square error, yeah. So SIG. And then the, the estimator of the threshold value and the residual rate variant. Uh, you can see the symbol here and also the sigma square uh, can be obtained. They collect this uh, info. Uh, the, in the testing procedure, the null hypothesis of no threshold effect is tested by using the beta 1 bet is equal to beta 2. Mean that the coefficient actually are the same, therefore no need to split to the two subsample, right? And the alternative is not equal, mean beta 1 not equal to beta 2. Using the likelihood ratio test, the F, huh? and you can see this is the F test uh, statistic, okay? The SO and also the S1 and the multiply with this, uh, the, the coefficient here. Uh, some of the square error for the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Seeing the F test, uh, F1 has a non uh, standard distribution. Uh, Hansen used the bootstrap to get the critical value, right? So that they can make an inference whether uh, can reject the hypothesis now or accept the hypothesis uh, now. Then the, the asymptotic distribution of the transfer estimate is tested with the null hypothesis and using this likelihood ratio statistic test. So they have the confidence interval. So this is the confidence interval to find the, you know, the, the upper bound and lower bound where for a given asymptotic level better, the null hypothesis is this and re rejected in let's say the the likelihood ratio is exit the critical value. So furthermore, the model is modified if double threshold like this can be shown like this. Uh, let's say we have two double threshold, then the equation will be like this. Okay, less than the until that between these uh, the the threshold be in between these uh, splitting the sample the one and two, then after that the third one is the the, the depth ID or IT here. So we can test the whether we have the double threshold or triple threshold. So when the threshold value, you know, you can see the model can be extended to multiple uh, threshold using the same process. Yeah. All right, so this is uh, the article using the static panel uh, threshold. And then, uh, yeah. So based on this, I refer to one of the article, my colleague article. They test for the single threshold, the F test, then it's significant. So this one, 64.33 is a percentage of the depth. Yeah, then it's the threshold, then it's significant. And then they move to whether we have any double threshold. The, the F statistic and the P value is not significant. And they move to test for the triple threshold and also show that no significant. Then we conclude only have one uh, threshold in our data set. So we conclude only one uh, single threshold and the optimum uh, of the, or the depth is a 64.33% example. Yeah, and significant one single threshold in this uh, finding. Then we can present the result like this. You can, yeah. So these are the controllable asset growth, sales to the income growth, the uh, MVBV is also the three controllable. Then the debt ratio, 
Yeah, it's less than below the threshold and above the debt threshold. So you can see whether this is significant. So you think that uh, below the threshold, the debt is significant and the coefficient is positive, but above the threshold, even though the coefficient is still uh, uh, positive, the, the t uh, statistic is not significant. So mean that uh, the, the debt significant only below the threshold. Mean that the higher the debt, then the won't have any impact on our uh, RO, ROE, yeah, the dependent variable is the firm that performance. So this is the result. And also we can use the white uh, standard error to compute the t-test. And the result also uh, give you quite a similar uh, result, significant. So yeah, based on the Hansen method, yeah. So I will show you how to uh, run this uh, using the the example uh, the the panel static uh, threshold method. Of course, we need to learn from the the one that propose or suggest this uh, method. Yeah, professor uh, from the Bruce Hansen, the professor from the University of Wisconsin. Yeah. So, uh, if we visit the professor uh, website, then you can see, yeah, this one. The program and data, you just go and click the program and data, all right? So you can see a lot of information that show the program as well as the data and also their paper that they use for their, the data that they use for the estimation. So, okay, so then you click, then organize by the date or organize by subject. Let's say I click organize by subject, all right? They will show you the method, arch, co-integration, GMM, Marco switching, short chain. So the one we are interested here is a threshold model. Then I click the threshold model, right? Then when I click the threshold model, they will show you this all this threshold uh, model, the program, and also the paper title. Yeah, for example, the the one that that we use nineteen ninety nine. Is published in Journal of Econometric, yeah, threshold effect in the non-dynamic panel. Okay, so I click download and go and click download. Of course, there are other uh, uh, method as well. So we just click download, then they will show you this. Yeah, they either we want to use the ground program and the data, MATLAB R program or Stata or the Rex program. Yeah. So because I think, I believe uh, most of us now, we are using the Stata, then I choose the Stata. So the command is XTHREG. Yeah? So XTX refer to the uh, cross session, X, uh, the cross session and the T is the time. So the command uh, start with the XT in the Stata is the panel command. So how to apply in our work? So the Hansen 1999 static uh, threshold can be implemented in various software. So in our example, we use the starter XTH REG command. Of course, we need to install, yeah, SSD install the XTH REG command in our data. So for example, I want to see the impact of the transparency index on our economy growth. I have N63 country. This is the macro panel data, national, uh, international macro level. And the T, I have six here, and I use the stata. So first we need to install the program, the code. So I use SSC install in our stata, you know, when you want to run. So install this uh, code. Unless it's not available, you can use, find it, this code. Because sometimes you need to use install or SSC install or find it. Okay, let's say then we install this command, then we need to specify our data is the panel data. So normally we need to remember because this is the panel data. So we need to give a signal to the data that this is the panel data. So we need to actually set code and year. So code is a cross section 
year is a time, not the other way around, all right? So the data will show, okay, this is only balance payment data. Then we check the data. So let's say I do not know how, what is this program. I will go to the data, then help, then I type this command. Then they will explain to, to us what is this command. So how to apply, they have the example together with their data set. So you can use the data set and then try to use their command to run as an example. Then you can modify and or you can duplicate uh, using the same code when apply in our data. So this XDHREG is to fit the fit effect panel threshold model based on the method suggested by the Hansen 1999. So this is the code XDHREG. And then, uh, yeah, but this one only apply for the balance panel data. It let's say our data is not uh, balanced, therefore, we try to make it balanced for this uh, static panel threshold uh, developed by Hansen 1999. So, yeah, when you check the, the when you go to the data, then you set the, you tap this command, they will come up all this, yeah. So this one you can use the uh, Hansen 99, uh, 1999 data set that in your, your state. Then you can estimate a single threshold. Yeah, of course, they will explain to you what is this. Yeah, all RX, QX, and all this they will explain to you. And uh, you can read their, their explanation. So the dependent and then the independent, the D1, then the QD1. And the Rx here is referred to the you no know, one of and also the is a threshold variable here is a C1. Oh no, QX is a threshold. It's let's say it's, it's yeah, the QX. Then we can estimate the triple threshold. Yeah, when you come to see yeah, the triple threshold, then this one they change to three. Instead of one, then they have the Trimming percent, trimming uh, percentage. We need to have three because we let's say we want to test for the triple threshold. So only single threshold, just uh, one percent example. Then after that, you can see the command. Then you can apply this uh, command in our data set. So it's based on bootstrap. You know, uh, three hundred, uh, three hundred time to get the critical value for each uh, triple threshold. Then after that, the triple transfer model that D. Yeah, so you can learn from the Stata software. So normally we learn from this uh, yeah, explanation. Then we try to use our own data and then use the program, right? See whether it's work. If not, then they come up with the error message. Then we try to search where is the error. Okay. So example, let's say I'm to I look at the threshold variable is a trade openers at the real GDP per capita. I have the financial openers. PRI is a financial development. So my threshold variable is a trade openers. So I did not include in one of the independent variable. So it's okay, fine. So you want to include the TO here in the model specification is all right, no problem. Yeah, so mean that you think the TO also play important role to affect the dependent. Okay, so other that, yeah, I apply the. Okay, I need to transform all the variable to log using the generate command. Ln is the major log. Right. So this is the xdhreg. I follow the the command. Then a uh, comma. The this is the threshold variable and also the the all the command I use for bootstrap uh, 300 times. So 300 bootstrap. Then after that they give you the threshold estimator. Yeah, so you can see here they have the threshold lower and upper. Alright, so the result that we need to look at is a threshold effect test. Yeah. So it's a single threshold. Uh, then you look at the p value only significant at 10%, not 5%. Yeah. So the transfer effect is significant 10%. Since the p value is less than 0 0.1. So next, we want to see the, the, the threshold result. 
So of course we need to see. If let's say this is less than 0 0.05, confirm we have the threshold. We need to split the sample because so the we have the threshold effect. So we and then I run this uh, regression. Of course, the result will come up. Continue this one. So these two are the control variable significant, and then they have the below and above. So below the threshold is zero point zero six. Above the threshold is zero point zero four, and then the below the threshold significant at ten percent, but above one is not significant. So below the threshold, the impact is positive. You can see the coefficient sign here, and significant ten percent. Yeah, but above the threshold, the the trade openness is not significant. All right. Yeah. So we can see that all right below significant above not um, significant so the third example let's say i want to see the impact of the financial openness on the trade openness okay it's a, so on my dependent is a trade openness do then the threshold is the financial openness so the, one more another example so again i use the command i just thanks for the Sim, uh, single sample split first okay then you can see the p value is not significant yeah so mean that no threshold no need to split the sample yeah the threshold effect is insignificant since the p value is greater than 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 unless you want to consider 10 percent and then uh, see the result because why you can see the coefficient below and above Actually, they are the same. Yeah, below zero point three three, above zero point three one. So more or less the same. Mean that the beta one actually equal to beta two. Like this now, uh, we see the the hypothesis. If let's say both have the similar, uh, quite similar value, then we no need to split. Yeah. So no threshold effect. This one we test whether have threshold. And the result indicate no threshold neither is needed. So no threshold effect and both below and above the threshold coefficient are significant. This example show back to the linear model. Mean that okay now we back to the linear model. No need to have the non-linear model like the threshold equation, right? Yeah, because both coefficient are same sign and also show the same sign. Yeah. So Therefore, we back to the linear model instead of the non-linear threshold model. So this is the example when yeah, some sometimes we may have this result. No, uh, the threshold is not significant. And when we estimate the result below and above the coefficient is the same. So beta one at three equal to the beta two. So we can summarize in the table, yeah. So if the coefficient, standard error, t statistic, and the uh, below the threshold, what is the the, co the coefficient for the trade openness, and above the threshold, what is the coefficient for the trade openness? And of course, now the data can direct transform the result to our Microsoft Word di directly, or even the Microsoft Excel. So we no need to type again, yeah. So nowadays the data can transfer to you, uh, in the Microsoft Word, and even they indicate the significant the star three star one percent two star five percent. So mean that doing research now is very fast because they can form a table a nice table for you. For example, let's say you have four model, you estimate model one, then you use the command. The command is out reg2. Yeah, it's a new command. Then you can convert to save in the Microsoft Word document dot doc. Yeah. Then after that, you run for the model two, model three, model four. Then all the result will be gathered in one table, so that they will form one table, nice table, so we can direct interpret the finding. So make our life more easier to interpret the result so you no need to spend time to fill up the table or the coefficient the standard error yeah so it's very fast to use the data to run our analysis
Right, so I move to the second one. Uh, it's a Hansen uh, 2000. Yeah, but this one is not the panel, but it's a cross session and the time series. Let's say your data is a cross session data and the time series, then you can apply. All right. So many banking, economic, or finance issues are dynamic by nature. And to understand this adjustment, yeah, it's important because the past will influence the current performance. So allowing for dynamic in the in the underlying process may be crucial for recovering consistent estimate of other parameter, mean that other coefficient for other variable. So therefore we need to include the lag dependent in the model. For example, of course the economy growth is a dynamic process yeah this year economy grow depend on the last year example and the investment of the firm whether they want to invest this year also depend on the last year their performance the firm performance and the capital structure as well go for the debt or they have to go for the equity also the dynamic process so the Hansen 2000 is based on the cross session and time series time series data so the threshold value will be computed. Yeah, actually it's more or less same concept with the 1999, yeah? the, the, the mechanism or the, yeah, the, the threshold, how to estimate. Yeah? So based on the bootstrap regression to the data generating process, we estimate using the OLS first, then we com compare the residual sum of square. So we will choose the minimum residual sum square, then that one will be our threshold. Okay. So yeah, this is a reference Hansen 2000. Yeah, just now I show you the, the Professor Hansen. Uh, yeah, this one also available in the, in the website. Okay. So you can click download the code, then in, uh, copy into your Stata uh, program. So for example, I have to one more model one model two. So the first one is just a linear model. Second one is a threshold model as split to the two below the lambda, below the institutional threshold, and above the lambda. So meaning that in this case, uh, this one is uh, yeah, you want to test the null hypothesis beta one equal to beta two. Yeah. So mean let's say my major concern is the institution variable. So I want to see whether institution affect the economy growth. So beta one and the beta two. If let's say they are the same, then they are back to the equation one. No need to speak to the two uh, subsample that below the threshold and above the threshold. So actually it's a linear model number one. And then the p-value are computed by the fixed bootstrap method. Uh, the Hansen show that this procedure here Asymptotically a uh, correct p value, the p value is more reliable yeah, using this uh, bootstrap procedure. So, yeah, based on this uh, King and Levin 1993, the paper based on the financial development and economic growth, yeah, the link between finance and growth. So, this is financial development FD. G, G is the economic growth. Then you can see the subscript here is I, is represent the, the individual country, it's a cross-section, uh, not IT, uh, IT is a panel, and I is a cross-section. It lets a T refer to the time series, yeah? so you need to write the model properly, the notation. So G is the average growth, let's say you can take 5 year or 10 year average growth, Let's say you do not want to use panel, you want to use a cross section. Now, of course, you can average the five year or average the 10 year. Then the financial development also can average the five year or 10 year. And the other control variable take the average. So, mean that each country only have one point, yeah? one point for each variable. So, it's a vector of the control, the X, uh, initial income per capita, investment over GDP population growth, and also the human capital. So these are the major control for the economy growth yeah, based on the theory, uh, economic theory. Yeah. Of course, when you want to specify the model with the mass based on the economy, the theory, the theory to support, or based on the 
literature, it lets you know theory. Yeah? You can refer to other researchers. Why they use this as a control verb, the argument, whether the expected side is positive or negative, and what they found, we need to explain in the methodology part why we use this as a control verb, explain clearly, so that the editor know why you take this as a control. So uh, then we have the sample split and the threshold regression. Yeah? So you can see this is the, the sample split equation. We have two below and also the above the threshold. And then, yeah. So the threshold here is unknown. Huh? We do not know what is the value of this institutional uh, threshold. Yeah. The scale, let's say the scale 1 to 50 or 1 to 100. Yeah. So that we can, you can see. All right, you can just use the original scale or you want to use the log, then when you get the threshold, then you need to convert back to the original uh, threshold value, the original uh, measure uh, using the, the empty log or the exponential exponent. Okay. So institution is a threshold variable used to split the sample into two regions. So the institution want to see the effect of economic growth or no, if the effect of financial development on growth is subject to the better institution or bad institution. So institution can be that the corruption, the rule of law, the government stability and the democratic and also the accountability example. So this data is available in the World Bank as well as the international country risk guide. So the lambda is unknown parameter. Yeah? So the role of finance uh, in growth depends on the institution, whether the institution is good or high uh, institution or low institutional uh, quality. So in this equation, institution act as a center splitting variable and the impact of the Finance on growth will be beta one for the country with the low regime of the institution and beta two for country with the high regime mean better institution. So always that the under the hypothesis the model become linear, it lets say no uh, threshold exists, then we need to back to the linear equation, no need to use the threshold equation, no need to split the sample. So the impact of the finance on growth will be better one or better two for country low institution or high institution regime. So this is a we test a hypothesis beta one equal to beta two the model. So let's say equal we back to the linear model equation one. So to test this hypothesis, uh, uh, then we use the wall test or Elm statistic for each possible value of the lambda. Since the tabulation were not possible, the infant were conducted via the model based on the bootstrap as well. They use the bootstrap to generate, gen, generate the critical value. All right. Then make the, the conclusion to test the hypothesis. So the first step, our estimation was to test the null hypothesis of linearity. Again, the threshold, uh, the equation one and equation two, of course, beta 1 equal to beta 2. Yeah? So since the threshold parameter lambda was not identified under the now hypothesis, this becomes the non-standard infant problem. And the one or LM test statistic therefore did not carry their conventional chi square limit. Therefore, uh, Hansen they prefer using the bootstrap to generate the critical uh, value. Instead, then inference were implemented by calculating the WOW and RM test for each possible value. And the lambda is a threshold for institution. All right? So we have this uh, WOW test and RM test across all possible the lambda. The limiting distribution of this uh, supreme uh, statistic is the non-standard uh, and depend on the numerous model specific Nansen parameter. So when the, the lambda was obtained, we have identified the threshold or turning point. Yeah? 
as minimize the residual sum of square computed across all possible value of the lambda, then we can identify the slope parameter beta 1 and beta 2. Yeah? So we can test whether beta 1 and beta 2 actually is the same or different. It's let's say uh, not, it's the same. You no need to split. Yeah? Then it's a linear model. So yeah, how to apply? We use the Hansen uh, 2000 in the Stata program. So if you go back to the Hansen website, they have this as well, the Hansen 2000. So the farm illustrate the use of the Stata. So yeah, we need to copy the file file. When you click the, you know, the program, they will, do, they will come up with five file. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, read me, then the DTA is the uh, data file. We use this, uh, this uh, Dwarf Johnson data, and these are the file that a, a, a do file and so the do file that we need to copy and paste in your data uh, folder. Then we can apply. Yeah. So put all this file in your data working directory. Copy and paste in your uh, data folder. So what is the first one? The first file is the threshold regression mean they want to detect whether is there any threshold yeah so this is the first file and they can set equal to zero the the this uh the yeah i and d yeah uh, hr equal to zero impose homo scedasticity assumption because this is the cross-section uh, data yeah and if set one mean you use the white corrected uh, um for the heteroscedasticity. Because the cross-section of concern is heteroscedasticity problem. So the program estimates the threshold regression between the result and to the screen. And the program also plot the graph of the likelihood ratio process in the threshold. So it's useful for the threshold confidence interval. We can see whether is there any threshold by looking at the graph. Not only the test p value, but also we can see from the graph. So the second one is the threshold test. Then we, we detect the threshold. Then we test the using the threshold regression. Yeah. Uh, so this is the second uh, uh, code that we can apply. And the third one is the do file for the Hansen and the data file. And finally, it's just a readme. Of course, you can read. So first, I test the, I implement this one, uh, the test for the threshold, yeah. So you can see this is uh, the threshold test. I put the, in your data, you need to type this, uh, your dependent variable. So at first, I want to test whether is there any threshold. So the dependent is the economy growth, the log GDP is the initial GDP, Investment, population growth, schooling is the human capital. Then comma. And they want to see the original GDP, what is the, the income, yeah, GDP as a threshold. And the other one is the streaming percentage and also the, the bootstrap. Yeah? So then this is the result. You can see the result. The bootstrap P value is 10%. Eh? Is significant 10%, not, not even 5%. So, I mean, it's a weak, significant, not so strong. Yeah. So, you can see the threshold estimate and you look at the p value. So, actually, this one is not the, the threshold estimate, the sample split yet. It does uh, want to test the bootstrap p value, whether can we split the sample, yes or no. But this one, 833, actually, is not the, the turning point. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's significant 10%. So actually it's not significant because our standard benchmark is 95 confident interval. So it's 5% the, the critical, you know, the, the significant level. So we can plot the graph to see. So you can see that the blue color one below the graph, the graph huh? yeah, below the red color line. So the red color line actually is a critical value and the 5% critical value. And this is the gamma, you know, the they compute the, the the one that the gamma is to show the just now the, the symbol there, huh? the, the gamma. So all below this one. So actually it's not 
if let's say the the blue color line above the red color line then it's significant but since our p value is only significant at 10 percent eh? so therefore it's not strong enough to um, grade you no know, exit this uh, red color line so therefore uh, the threshold is very weak yeah for this case so never mind we can proceed to see what else we can do so next they will show you the threshold estimation based on our gdp yeah so yeah the threshold regression now first we detect the whether you have any threshold second we want to run the threshold regression so all right you need to tap on this in your state as a dependent independent variable comma then q is the threshold gdp h1 yeah you put one one to control for this hetero uh, scalasticity then first they will give you the overall ols estimation result mean our ols result but without the hetero scalasticity problem yeah so this is the result for the yeah the global ORS is just a ORS estimation, but they use the global ORS now. Just or you can ignore the global ORS. Global just uh, ORS estimation. So this is the intercept. Is the constant term log GDP, investment over GDP, and also the population growth. So these are the command and the observation ninety six observation. Yeah. So we have ninety six observation. So this is the normal OLS. And after that, we want to see the sample splitting. So the threshold estimate now, then, yeah. So now we can see the threshold estimate. Instead of just now 866, six, right? So I think so, yeah. This the first one is the, yeah, 833, 833. Now when they, yeah, now we, when they exact find the turning, the threshold is the 863. So they have the 95% confidence in the world. And then they have no more uh, heteroscedasticity because the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. I mean that this one, the cross-sectional estimation now, problem of this heteroscedasticity, the variance are constant. So now we want to see the below the threshold, yeah, is x63 below the GDP, uh, x63 US dollar. So below the GDP, then you can see the all the coefficient and so the standard error. but the, we need to compute the t statistic because the data won't give you the t therefore you need to use the the coefficient divided by the standard error then if let's say greater than 1.96 five percent then is significant yeah it's greater than 2.57 is one percent significant sorry prof for interrupting you have 10 more minutes okay fine yeah 10 more minutes so then you can see this all the estimation, the standard error, you can compute, you can make a table and just focus on the above. Then this one is uh, greater than the threshold. So this is a result. Okay, then after that you can plot the graph. So now the the you can see yeah, the x63 actually is for the minimum point, and this one, the red card, the is above the critical value okay the the line for this uh, gamma is above the red color the critical value and you want to uh, split for the second sample spread then you need to get rid of the x63 mean that you drop the gdp uh, x63 then start from above the x63 yeah then you can uh, focus on the second uh, sample spread Again, you just uh, repeat the same process. Then, uh, but it's not significant, yeah, because the below the critical value line, then no second sample split. So yeah, you can present the graph, yeah, in your work so that you can identify, or you can present the p value to indicate the threshold. Uh, I think I need to skip this one. It's just an example, yeah. I think better move to the. Yeah, so finally you can summarize the result. So this is a G ORS without threshold, the normal ORS, but no heteroscedasticity. So this is the result, and this is below the threshold, above the threshold.
Yeah, yeah. So you can see, if let's say your interest variable is a transparency index, then you can see that below the threshold is not significant, but above the threshold is significant. Mean that greater transparency have a significant uh, impact on economic growth. Right. Therefore, transparency is important to maybe to attract the FDI. You know, more transparent provide more information. Then our economy will grow. Example, yeah, you can formulate in one table like this, or let the data formulate for you. Or uh, this is another one. If let's say you got second sample split, you need to produce another table, right? Okay. So how to apply in let's say Islamic finance area? You can see the conventional finance. You can see this uh, two paper, uh, a paper by this necessary. We look at the size threshold. And also the revenue diversification. Is there a threshold in affecting risk and so profitability of bank? Study on Islamic financing on economic growth to find beyond a certain uh, threshold of Islamic financing will affect the growth negative or positive uh, example. Then we can use for the time series analysis as well, the same process, same command, for example, to find the threshold level for the country budget deficit, how many percent, to examine the public debt, whether it's 50% of the public debt is the threshold, if let's say Indonesia is having achieved 50%, then the government can borrow and then um, use the money to uh, for the de de development uh, process, example, yeah, yeah, you can use a uh, the threshold to decide Malaysia they said government set 55 percent due to the COVID they increased to 60 percent yeah so to evaluate the tipping point of the financial development where the two months finance is harm economy growth to find minimum value for the effect of X and Y so you can use the time series data same command so this is the example the one that I published in the journal banking finance institutional quality threshold in the finance growth Next, so this is a model, and you can see the equation for the threshold. Huh? So this is uh, below the threshold, and then we have the above the threshold. I is this uh, indicator function, yeah. So this one, yeah, is below the threshold, above the threshold. You can read the paper. Uh, so we can see the, yeah, the bootstrap indicate that, that uh, ten percent significant, but uh, for the, yeah, we have I have two. Two institution indicator, one from the ICRE, one from the WGI. Then we have two, uh, yeah, therefore I have two column. So, yeah, you can find, then I detect, okay, we have the threshold. Then we can see the threshold result. I focus on the financial development. So, this is the ORS result. And below the threshold, not significant, above the threshold, mean that when the institution is good above the higher institution, then the finance play an important role in promoting economic growth. Example, yeah, we must look at our interest work, our topic. So too small to succeed versus too big to fail. So how much does size matter in banking? So this is another uh, the paper that I mentioned just now. They try to look at the bank banking uh, sector. Yeah, now I move to the last one, uh, the grammar, and also the so and shin. Yeah, the this one is a more uh, dynamic panel threshold panel data, not the cross section and time series. So yeah, you can see they have the lag dependent variable in the on the right hand side, and also the initial income for economic growth. If you are public debt, then you need to have the initial income as a uh, uh, lack dependent variable as well. So this is the to show you the dynamic effect. Uh, the growth then the yeah, let's say this uh, I F is uh, Islamic finance debt is a public debt. So these two are the threshold variable in the model and X are the control variable. So the equation two, this is the equation two, uh, yeah. So you can see the equation two is a well uh, uh, presented here to capture the presence of contingency effect and to offer a rich way of the modeling the effect of x on y 
So you can see this one is less than the threshold. Okay, so this one is a delta one is the intercept uh, when the the let's say the curve uh, touch the vertical axis. What is the intercept? And this is above the threshold. Yeah, so we have the two indicator uh, function below and above, and we would like to see the and then the threshold wherever then we need to identify. So Kramer explored the non-linear behavior. They extend the Hansen 1999 uh, panel static threshold and also they include the Canon Hansen 2004, that one they use the IV uh, instrumental variable threshold. Yeah, so they combine these two and then they use the GMM as well to estimate the threshold equation. You could like this equation. So yeah, the U mu UI is country specific effect. Right? And also the other, I think I no need to mention, I think I've showed this uh, equation before below the threshold, the lambda, and this is the intercept and regime intercept above the threshold, yeah. I think and then the important the z variable, the z variable contains the vector of the control. They can divide into the z1 it, it's a set of the exogenous variable, and the z2 it is contained the endogenous variable. So the endogenous variable is a lag dependent variable. In this case, yeah, it's a lag dependent variable, only one only. And then the indicator function indicate the regime. And then the z contain the vector of controlling variable, and yeah, we divide into two la. one z, one z, and two. And the estimator allow for different regime intercept. Yeah, they cross the intercept means by this uh, uh delta one, and the impact of x on y can be explained by the beta one or beta two. So below and above threshold. Yeah, beta one is below, beta two is above. So the first step, they have to eliminate the country specific effect. They use the first difference to remove this uh, the specific effect yeah, for the country uh, specific effect. Then they use the forward orthogonal deviation. So this is the breakthrough or the innovation by the grammar. They use this forward orthogonal deviation transformation technique. It's used to eliminate the fee effect. And then they, the other transformation technique First different and the within lead to the inconsistency estimate. So they use this the uh, forward orthogonal division, but they are not using the, the first different thing or within lead to inconsistent estimate. So the first different thing and the within transformation method are not applicable here due to the violation of the distribution assumption underlying by Hansen and the Canon Hansen. Alright, so I think the uniqueness of I think you, you can read lah. This is forward orthogonal. So okay, the above is a transformation. They use this uh, the epsilon star to transform the whatever, and then they follow the step uh. Okay, so I think I need to be fast faster move faster. So again, this is the the method lah, uh. So again, they also use the similar method. So, uh, some uh, or should you sum square? Yeah, minimize this. Uh. And similar to Hansen, they also have this uh, uh, this LR log like the likelihood ratio as a critical value, ninety five percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I can skip all this. I think I show you the result. So this is the paper I apply uh, using the Kramer the dynamic panel uh, model. So the grow finance, whether finance uh, does too much finance harm economic growth. Okay. So the result, you can see the result. impact. Uh. So the threshold, because I have three indicator, private sector credit, liquid liability, domestic credit. So they have different threshold. So this one is in the natural log. We need to take the exponent, you know, to get back to the percentage over GDP. But what we need to know here is the below and above. You can see the beta 2, negative and significant. Sorry, Prof. Law, for interrupting. I think uh, your time is up. Okay, fine. Yes. Well, it is, uh, 
you show your journal i think it's quite uh, formidable to me because you have published in journal of banking and finance and it is good to see but uh we have to move the q and a session yeah. uh sorry <laughs> so you can uh, now it's okay fine because i think uh, um i will send you the slide so that uh, just follow let's say for those who are interested to run the analysis you can follow the the code you know then you can get the result okay yeah and so sorry because i cannot uh, move to the the the, the this one huh? mm, no i think the okay the, the, this the last one the i think the yeah, it's the same huh? uh, this one but it's okay this is a uh, more recent i will strongly recommend uh, use this uh, so and shin yeah they also have their code their code is uh, i think i show the code you can this is the original paper published in 2016 then the code is X T H E N R E G, yeah. So you can install the code, yeah? Then you can apply. Then you can see the difference between the 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 this one and the grammar. You can see the result. Oh, they not only the they split the financial development to two regions below and above. But the other wherever they also have the below and above. So this is the difference between the the grammar and so the the so and shin, yeah? Because they believe that other independent verbal they also must be split to the two regime, not only the threshold wherever. So this is a major difference, yeah. Uh, so okay, I stop here. Thank you so much, huh? Yeah. Well, uh thank you very much. Well, I have read and then also and replicate the codes in uh, Stata mm. and I think it's quite good if you can share the codes and your slide because sometimes yeah. when I do by myself I fail to replicate maybe be, that's not just that's not just because I uh, cannot replicate the code maybe for the example of the data set or yeah, something of what I miss maybe yeah, yeah. Sure. so we we move to the uh, Q&A session the first session from you Danny Dr. Law can the turning point Z or ZIT maybe be a mod be a mediator instead of a moderator variable? Oh, the mediator uh, and also the moderator, uh, yeah, okay. Because the you need to uh, yeah, I think this is a uh, important uh, question that you need to address. So um, thank you for your question. So the difference between the mo moderator and me mediator. So the moderator mean the effect of X on Y uh, depend on the let's say the Z whether the the Z variable is high or low, but for the mediator they just as a through this mean the effect of X on Y through this Z uh, through the Z variable yeah so it's not depend whether the the Z variable is high or low but mean the effect of X on Y must go through the the Z variable. So there's a difference between the moderator and mediator. So the mediator is just a, we need one more uh, z variable as a third variable. So the effect is indirect through the z variable. But for the moderator, it depends whether the z is high or low. Uh, if let's say it's high, they have the effect. If let's say the z is low, then no effect. Yeah? Uh, so I hope I answer the, the question. Yeah? Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Law, for the answer. The second question from Muhammad Haseb. Uh, maybe we can make this session more triumphant and exciting. Uh, Muhammad Haseb, can you hear me? Maybe you can ask Dr. Law by yourself. Uh, the the committee maybe uh, can turn the microphone on for Muhammad Haseb. Um, okay, uh, maybe, maybe Muhammad Haseb cannot okay. hear me. So uh, let me read the question. Uh, if our regression x is significantly positive and x2 is insignificant but negative sign, can we say that this model is linear because of insignificant result? How do we explain the negative sign of x2? 
Okay. Can yeah. we apply the threshold analysis for this case? Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, in the yeah, if you want to have the the nonlinear, the x and the x square both are significant. If let's say the x square is not significant, then it's a linear model. Then we we no need to use the the nonlinear model like the threshold model example. Yeah. So to mean that we 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 just apply the linear model instead of the non-linear uh, model or the threshold model. Okay. Yeah, and then he also can be applied threshold analysis on unbalanced panel data. All right. So for the unbalanced panel data here, yeah, for the grammar method, is able to apply for the unbalanced panel data. Yeah. Yeah. So you can apply unbalanced panel data uh, for the grammar method that just now I, I, I show uh, the, the slide. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, this is Mohammad Asif Khan. Sorry, I actually uh, the name was pronunciation was not correct. Means uh, not uh, Apple. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not that. So I was hearing you, but I think you are referring to others. Okay. The question is uh, like in my master thesis, I applied Hansen two thousand. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, investor asymmetric relationship be uh, between investor sentiment and stock returns, uh, mm. panel data. But actually, I applied at that time uh, Hansen 2000, mm. and it gave me separate for each industry. But mm. I didn't. Uh, I but now I realize that I made her, uh, I have made a mistake. I should apply in 1999, or is was yeah. that okay to apply the same? Yeah, if let's say your, your data is a panel data, then uh, 1999 is a static um, threshold. Uh, but if let's say in your case, you think your dependent variable is a dynamic variable, you think that it's a dynamic variable, then you need to use the dynamic panel threshold, yeah? Not the 1999. Of course, your data is a panel data, yeah, it fulfill the 1999 and also the the Kramer and also the latest one, the the, the Swiop, Swiop and Shin, yeah? So, but you need to um, make sure that whether your model or your dependent rubber is a dynamic variable or static. Unless it's static, then you can use the Hansen 1999. Yeah. Uh, of course, you can test. You just put the lag dependent in your independent rubber. Unless say it's significant, uh, then it's a dynamic. Unless it's not significant, then it's a static model. Yeah. Uh, you you get my point. Yes, sir, but uh, now you get the lag dependent rubber include in your estimation. If let's say the lag dependent is not, not significant, then you can use the static model. If let's say the lag dependent rubber is significant, then that one is a dynamic process. So you need to use a dynamic panel. Yeah? Uh. Okay, so in 1999, we will get a threshold value for each of the form if you are doing for a form. Uh, you can get the threshold value and also you like you can try to test whether it's a single sample uh, split double sem no double uh, threshold or triple threshold yeah so mean that you cannot stop uh, at a single sample uh, simple threshold but you need to further to test for the double threshold or the triple threshold yeah to ensure that uh, no more other sample splitting, okay, for the data set. Thank you so much for the answer. Yeah, we'll come on. Thank you, uh, Mas Muhammad. Okay, uh, the next question from Zulkarnain Ishak. Thanks, uh, Prof. Law. Uh, sorry, he has a problem. He has two problems. Do you think all methods of estimation, such as random effect, fixed effect and panel method need to be estimated and second question why the fixed effect method cannot be estimated and how to improve that uh, uh, the question is from uh, let me delete the question uh, okay yeah. Zul Karna and Ishak. Zul yeah uh, i think that's common question uh, okay yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. okay do you think all method of the 
if let's okay, uh, if let's say you want to apply uh, the uh, actually, uh, if let's say uh, the objective is to to see the to uh, let's say you want to look at the threshold or the tipping point, you can skip this uh, random effect free effect uh, estimation. Um, yeah, I think because that one is just a traditional panel data estimation. Uh, if let's say this estimation uh, wouldn't be able to answer your objective, then uh, we can skip that uh, random effect or fit effect. You can direct uh, go to this uh, threshold estimation or the non linearity test first, okay? And the second is why the fit effect method often cannot be estimated and have to improve. Uh. Okay, the fit effect, actually we have two. One is a uh, within, uh, another one is a least square uh, dummy variable. So the within one, they get rid of this uh, specific effect. I mean, they, they estimate using the first different or they, 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 they eliminate the specific effect using the mean. Because this fit effect is a fit, therefore the mean also the same, therefore is here you minus the same mean then the the value of this specific effect or fit effect will be eliminated so therefore uh, it's a considered as a within estimator and the other one is a least square dummy variable we create the dummy to represent each is a let's say the, the your sample is firm or country, then this dummy will represent the, the firm or country, but it depends on the how many country you have. Let's say you have about or how many firm. Let's if have 50 firm, then it's okay. We can include 49 uh, dummy in our estimation. So this dummy actually capture the 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 intercept. So different intercept for each uh, country or each firm. So we assume that let's say other x equal to zero. What is the value of the y? Then the intercept value will be present by all these uh, firm or the country. And the good good news of the least grain dummy variable is they won't delete or they can estimate even though your data is a time time invariant. For example, the distance between the country. Uh, city to city, uh, how many uh, kilometers, example. Uh, uh, so the time invariant um, variable still remain. But you use the within fit effect, they will drop the variable for you. Yeah. So therefore, there are two fit effect estimation. One is within, one is a least square dummy variable. You can use the OLS, normal OLS yeah, to estimate. But you need to create the dummy to represent the, the company or the country so that you can see which country or which firm or company rank the first yeah let's say the company a the the intercept is the highest then this indicate that this country or this firm uh, have the highest performance let's say your uh, dependent is the roa yeah the firm then you can see the firm sometimes the firm can have the Negative intercept mean that the firm not performing well. Their dependent is negative, assuming all the x is equal to zero. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, uh, sometimes the fit effect cannot be estimated. Yeah, because when you have the time invariant uh, variable, then they will drop for you. Yeah. Uh, so I think I hope I hope I answer uh, your question. Yeah, to can I? Okay. Uh, Okay, Prof. Lo. Uh, well, I have I replicate grammar 2013 uh, to analyze finance growth nexus. Uh, in this occasion, in that occasion, will be fintech. Hmm. So uh, the beta one is significant positive, but the beta two is not significant. Is uh, what that does mean? What does uh, that mean? Is that a uh, not perfect? U shape curve, or there will be a such as a what is a delay effect? Okay, because fintech is uh, growing now. Thank you. 
I think uh, yeah, this is important uh, question also. Yeah, the yeah, I think uh, the we need to look at the below and the above. Let's say the below is the a positive sign, and then the uh, no, below is a positive sign, then above is a negative sign, then they have the inverted U shape, yeah. Yeah. And let's say the below is a is a ne below is negative, above is positive. Then it's a U shape. So for your case, you need to look at the sign. Whether these two, the beta one, beta two, is these two have the same sign, positive or negative? Uh? Can you tell me the below the threshold, the sign is positive or negative? So uh, first of all, yeah, first of all, I plot the scatter plot, and the uh, the plot is like uh, S plot. It's not uh, oh. exactly. Uh, inverted U shape, hmm. but the the beta two is negative, not significant. So, uh, so is that mean that there will be rise again or second wave? Oh, yeah. second wave, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in this occasion. <laughs> second wave. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah you are right. Uh, yeah, this mean the above the threshold is negative, but is it uh the the negative is significant or not not significant? Not significant for beta two. Okay. The below and, below yeah. threshold is not significant. Uh, okay, below the threshold not significant. Above the threshold negative and significant is it? Uh, uh positive, positive. Uh, uh, beta one is uh sorry, oh uh, below below the threshold is positive significant. Uh, and after the threshold is not significant. But negative. After the threshold point, uh, yeah, but, negative but negative. Uh, yeah. It's okay because not significant. Uh, it's negative but not significant. It's significant then uh, we need to think further why significant and negative, right? Oh yeah, can be negative as well but not significant. So this indicates that okay, maybe okay below the threshold is positive significant. Uh, your your dependent is okay. Your dependent is a uh, economy growth. Is it? Finance, yeah, fintech and economy grow. Huh? So, okay, so maybe uh, you can, I think maybe because the fintech, the measurement of fintech is, is important as well. Yeah, so yeah, below the threshold is important, but above is not significant but negative. It's okay, fine. Uh, the but the we need to argue why negative, but the good news is not significant. Yeah, and then maybe because they have the maybe because initially a few people they know this fintech, then therefore they contribute. And after that, more people they start to learn the fintech. Maybe they are in the process of learning, and then maybe not so everybody know about this. Therefore, the effect is not significant. Then turn out to be negative. But just now I mentioned the S curve. Maybe when they have the third, the S curve become the the positive, huh? Then at that time maybe it will be significant and significant and positive, maybe, yeah. So you can try to look at the the whether they have any one single sample splitting or two. If let's say got two, then you focus on the two sample or no the second sample splitting, then you look at the the last you no know, the last on the right hand side, whether that part is uh, positive and significant, yeah. Then justify your point, okay? Like yeah, not mean that uh, they okay. have the positive uh, they have the positive, of course, positive initially, then they can turn to negative but not significant. And perhaps after that, uh, they will turn back to positive and significant. Yeah? Uh, so we need to uh, split to the different uh, subsample to see the effect. Uh, not only one single uh, splitting, all right? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh... What is the difference between okay, the, uh, thank you. Uh, threshold model and interaction model? Huh? Interaction model. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, uh, you want to read by yourself? 
I think for uh, Mr. Wahida Ahmad, can you explain what the different or in the, what cases we should use a threshold model or interaction model? Thanks. Oh, okay, yeah. The, yeah, the interaction model will interact the variable X and Y. And the interaction model, we need to be careful because okay, let's say the, the variable is the, the variable is a continuous uh, or discrete variable mean they have the value let's say the money supply stock price or inflation yeah then our model the interaction model you interact with the let's say the the stock market interact with the let's say the stock market capitalization interact with the openness trade openness so therefore okay you have to these two interact but the model you must have the stock market um, capitalization and the trade openness yeah in the individual variable in the mod in the model if let's say you did not include these two as one of the, as the individual variable then the model will be uh, mis uh, specified but however if let's say you interact with the dummy then we no need to they interact with the dummy, then no need to create one dummy as one of the independent uh, whatever, just interact enough. Yeah? Uh, so the difference between the uh, threshold and the interaction model. So the threshold, of course, we have the, the to detect the turning point where we can split the sample, but the interaction term model, no, we cannot uh, see the uh, split to the different uh, sample size, yeah? sample period or sample size, you just only uh, estimate one interaction model, that's all. But for the threshold model, we can um, identify the, the tipping point or the threshold point. And, but the interaction model, of course, you can compute that the turning point as well. But the, the one, of course, you divide the act, take the differentiation, you also can get this uh, the uh, uh, turning point of this uh, threshold point but compared to the threshold model the threshold model they identify the the sample splitting by themselves but the interaction model no we interact with we assume they have the interaction then our our turning point may not the same uh, compared interaction model and the threshold model because the threshold model they identify the sample splitting based on the minimum the residual sum of square yeah but the interaction model no you just interact these two variable whether they have the interaction effect whether this these two interact significant or not that's all only yeah so therefore uh yeah the interaction term model if you interact interact the model your, your interpretation must based on the interaction model yeah and then you need to compute the new standard error because based on the literature the interaction term the standard error bias you need to recompute the variant and then come up with the new uh, standard error so take the coefficient the mean the marginal effect divided by the the new standard error then evaluate the interaction term whether significant or not significant you can we cannot direct look at the interaction term result then make a conclusion that okay it's significant no not necessary eh? we need to recompute the new standard error to evaluate the interaction term so yeah, a lot of work to do for the interaction term yeah based on the Bumble 2006 paper i think better sent to uh, you so that uh, you can uh, refer to compute the new standard error then uh, come up with the the more proper uh, whether the interaction term is significant or not significant yeah so the different of course the threshold is can split the sample by themselves but the interaction term no yeah? no sample splitting okay yeah Okay, uh, the next question is uh, from you, Danny. You, Danny, uh, do you want to uh, ask directly to Prof Law? 
if you want to ask directly, maybe the committee uh, can make you as a panelist. Uh, I think uh, Prof. Because I think this is. Before yeah. I, Sorry, I, Prof. Before I answer the question, I think one important question by uh, I think the the TM uh, the I do not know the name uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the time series threshold uh, for the Hansen uh, two thousand, all the variable must be uh, stationary at I zero. Mean the le the level they must be stationary. Yeah, they cannot stationary at first different. So therefore, uh, normally we use the grow to estimate this Hansen uh, two thousand for the time series. Uh, Threshold, yeah. I think the important uh, thing, the question is important. You may make sure my data is stationary. Yeah, for the Hansen two thousand, all variable must be stationary at I zero. Yeah, so it'll be I one. Therefore, if let's say I one, I will suggest that we use the growth of the variable to to estimate the Hansen two thousand time series uh, uh, threshold model. All right. Okay. So uh, move okay, to uh, yeah. Okay, uh sorry prof, there is uh someone raising his hand from Idam Lakoni. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh Mr. Idam Lakoni, do you want to ask your question directly to Prof Law? Okay, I think uh he can't hear me. Maybe we can uh to uh next question maybe yeah. Dr. Law, I have read your paper. This is the question from you, Danny. Hmm. Dr. Lau, I have read your paper regarding the non-linear relationship between financial development and innovation growth. Is it possible to introduce non-linear relationship? Yeah, yeah. I think this is a interesting issue. I think now they look at the financial development, innovation. Yeah, I think I have one uh, thing better. I, sh I, I can I uh, share my story again? I'm sorry for that. I think I have the Okay, I think uh example the one that um because I have this uh, paper the one that discussed the one that mentioned the issue mm, the yeah I think this is the one I think the paper is uh, financial development and innovation lead growth is too much finance uh, better. So yeah, I think I want to show this paper. Yeah, I think you can share the screen again, is it? Uh, I hope everybody can see. So this is the one that just now one of the yeah asked about this. I think yeah, I think yeah, the, the, the issue about this is important to study. Lack of the literature, yeah, finance innovation, and also you can incorporate this uh digitalization or Automation like the data is available. Yeah, now you uh, because of the IR four. Okay, so yeah, but but the innovation index is not uh, from the World Economy Forum. It's not many years, just uh, maybe five five years only. Of course, you can use the the number of number of pattern uh, or number of pattern application from the WIPO on the WIPO database, so the, as a measure of the innovation uh, based on the literature. And according to the literature, based on the literature, the R&D is not so uh, uh, appropriate uh, to measure the innovation because we spend money for R&D, but not guarantee we have the output. So they pre still prefer the number of pattern register, number of pattern grant application. Yeah? So they have the they they rank the indicator which one is the best. But now I think you can use the world uh, uh, economic um, forum data set because they already de de develop the innovation index. Even though the data only have the five year, I think it's enough for you to run the estimation because for the minimum GMM, the observation is three. Yeah, it's a three minimum. So if let's say you have five, it's more than enough. But try not to have more than ten. If let's say you can take the average uh, so that number of instruments will be reduced. Otherwise our result will be you know not so uh, not in line with the, what we expect. If let's say the number of instruments is too high. Yeah. So therefore we try to limit the 
the the number of observation the independent rubber because they also contribute to the instrument as well as the number of the t the, the number of the year yeah the observation the t is equal to 10. If let's say you have 11 12 then this will contribute to the number of in, uh, instrument yeah. so we need to review the instrument yeah uh, for the gmm estimation so yeah this is the paper that i think yeah and the results also show the, the panel um, threshold uh, this is the result i think just i show yeah the below the financial development and above the financial development you can see yeah so it seems that below the financial development is significant to affect the innovation but above more finance not contribute to innovation yeah it seems i also have the same finding i also why more finance is not contribute to innovation so maybe other factor will contribute to innovation after finance have achieved a certain level mean the firm have obtained the financing then maybe in terms of the technical part in terms of the human capital can they innovate or yeah so maybe we need to think about all this how to explain the result yeah so i hope uh yeah the the this is the the interesting uh, uh area that you can explore yeah yeah so i'm happy to know that uh, somebody has uh, started to to do this uh, topic yeah yeah okay thank you for reading my paper okay yeah okay prof Long, uh, the next question from ignatius Ronnie Satyalman, when is the right time to use GMM and what become the main requirement for conducting uh, the analysis of GMM? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, this is another uh, yeah, uh, uh, important uh, question. Also, the thank you for this uh, question. So, the requirement uh, normally the end, the cross section, uh, we prefer have 50, uh, uh, 5, 0, and above. The number of cross section must be uh, 50 and above. Um, then the the T is about 10, 10 years. If let's say you have 40 years, you can take the 4 year average, then reduce to 10. Yeah, Because for the GMM estimation, they are more concerned the N, big N rather than big T. So this is called the short panel or the micro panel because they more concern the big N, the T must be uh, small, let's say 3 to 10. Uh, three, mean, 3 is minimum. 10 is, uh, can be the, can be 10 or 11. Maximum, I think, is about around 11 or 10. Yeah? So you can take the average to reduce the T, become a 10 observation, and the N must be larger than 5, 0. Then this fulfill the requirement of GMM estimation, yeah. Otherwise, if let's say our our N only twenty country or twenty firm, then it's not so appropriate to use the GMM. Then we must use the time series uh, panel data, like the panel co-integration panel unit root, then the long run panel estimation uh, technique, yeah. So there is a difference between the short panel and the long panel. The short panel focus more on the big N, yeah. But the long panel they focus more on the big T, larger T. Mean the time dimension must be twenty years and above. T is big. Then the the T is big and the N can be big as well, yeah. And uh, can be the same. Let's say twenty T, twenty N, or but normally try. T is greater than N. So we can use a panel unit root panel co yeah. But the time series panel uh, technique, the development is more faster compared to the short panel because now they talk about this uh, cross-section dependent because of the, the residual of the, the firm or the country, they tend to uh, correlate each other. Yeah? Therefore, you need to into account of this uh, second generation 
which is they take into account with the cross-sectional dependent. Yeah? Uh, that one is uh, another um, story. So we have the first generation and second generation for the long panel. But for the short panel, GMM, no, just stop at the GMM. But recently, I noticed in the Stata, there is a new GMM code uh, to emerge. Emerge from the, yeah, they use the other code. Yeah, I think uh, I can send to you, Osman, so that you can send to everybody the code, uh, the new GMM code. Yeah, I think the, the, they have the innovation as well. Yeah, so not only the developed by uh, Brander and Bond 1998, but they also come up with the new GMM. Uh. I think the, the code is available in the state. Uh, yeah? So everybody can try to install and then read the how to apply using the example. Okay. So I hope I answer your question uh, about this innovation and financial development. Yeah, I think it's a good topic uh, to explore. You can include the institutional quality and also the other the rule of law and also the everybody has respect the law, then look low corruption. Uh, then maybe we we'll have a more story to tell. Then your paper will be uh, more, you know, the write-up will be have more pages, example. By the way, I think I need to share about this. Um, yeah, normally, uh, when we write, we need to have the balance paragraph. Uh, uh, one paragraph is about 16 to 17 lines, regardless double spacing or single spacing. Okay, so then our paragraph write out is balanced. Then normally the editor they prefer us to have the balanced paragraph, not mean two sentences, one paragraph, then the other one, one A4, please, one A4 paper, no paragraph at all. Yeah, so the line is about 16 to 17 line, yeah, each paragraph, and then total about 25 paragraph, yeah. So the pages try not to the write up uh, not more than twenty two pages uh, around there because when you write more we tend to have more mistake. This is the the assumption you known by the editor. So yeah, therefore we need to be careful when you write. Make sure that uh, you straight to the point. I like just now, uh, Prof uh, Robert had mentioned yeah. Motivation is important. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to answer the, the previous uh, cover by Prof. Uh, Robert, I think, uh, any more questions, please? Yeah, Yeah. Uh, thanks for the tips. I think that's for me too, <laughs> to write a balanced paragraph. Okay. Okay, uh, the next question is from Ananto Prabowo. How to interpret not significant? Is it no relation or no effect? I think that's a good question. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not significant because our hypothesis now, uh, yeah, if let's say beta one equal to zero or beta one uh, alternative uh, hypothesis now beta one or beta equal to zero mean no relationship because the slope is a uh, horizontal when the x is uh, small or or big the y uh, still remain the same point mean beta equal to zero means there's no relationship. So, and the alternative is not equal to zero. Maybe it can be greater or less than. You know the sign is positive or negative. You can form the less than or greater than. If not, normally we just put uh, not equal to. Lah, yeah? So it's two tier. So the two tier, the hypothesis alternative is uh, there is a relationship in that if you reject the now, then we conclude there is a relationship between x and y, example. Yeah? Let's say we have two variables. So mean that if significant means there is a relationship between these two variables. So significant means they are meaningful. Uh, their relationship is meaningful, they are significant. Yeah? 5% of course, we, our standard benchmark, of course, it's 1% mean they have more uh, stronger relationship because at 1% level, okay? Yeah, I hope I answer the, your question, yeah? Okay, yes. Okay, uh, that's very detailed answer, I think, yeah. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, the next question from Idam Lakoni. In research using secondary data, can the moderating variable be used uh, using a scale and even study? Oh, the 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 moderator can be used for the scale or the event study. And, yeah. Okay, for the event study, we need to identify the event first, right? Yeah. So the event, sometimes, for example, let's say uh, the stock market, let's say uh, the stock market event uh, can be the same event happen, yeah? Or can be the different event. Let's say the company, they want to distribute their dividend to their shareholder. So different company, they announce their dividend different date. Yeah. So, of course, we need to find the date, uh, three months before, three months after. So, the date should be the same announcement when they announce the dividend. But for the, let's say the, the, the event like COVID-19, then the one is happened this year, uh, this year, right, the, the, the Feb February and March, then the event will be the same for all the firm, okay? So the question is whether can the event study uh, apply? Um, so we need to identify the event and make sure the date is uh, the announcement also the same. Of course, different date, but you need to collect the three months before, three months after. Then you can combine the data. So you can see after the announcement, the dividend, let's say the company give dividend, let's say 5%, whether the stock uh, price have the reaction or have the response toward this announcement, yeah? So, if let's say they, they have the response, of course, the, the before is quite constant, then after the announcement, the graph might be increased a little bit or have the different pattern, right? So, the, the first question, I, I, I can you repeat the first question, the moderator one? Okay, uh, can the moderating variable be used by using a scale? Oh, scale. the scale, the moderation, the scale. Yeah. Scale means one, two, three, four, until seven, let's say the, the, the liquid scale. Okay, so, yeah. Um, because um, the scale can, yeah, it, let's say, yeah, it, let's say one is low, seven is high, or 10 is high. Then, yeah, of course, uh, we can use this as a moderator. Yeah, can, 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 uh? because, because why? For example, the, the cor corruption. Let's say uh, 10 is a perfect country, no corruption. One is a corrupted, uh, no high corruption, no uh, case. Then, look, one is very high corruption. 10 is uh, no corruption. So, you can use this as a moderator as well yeah but when you un when you interpret mean higher the value mean lower the corruption because 10 is a perfect no corruption but one low low one is a more corruption you know happen therefore the positive la, mean you look for the positive mean the interaction term you must see the same direction the interaction term, I mean, this one, the X and Y, let's say for example, X1, X2. X2 is a corruption, and X1 is, let's say, financial development. So, corruption is a high scale, low corruption. So, mean higher the value, interact the higher the value of the financial development. So, they have the same uh, magnitude. So, therefore, when you interpret, mean that this interaction term have moved to the same direction, higher the, mean that the higher the value, mm, low corruption. So mean that you can interact, yeah, you can interact, no problem, but come to interpretation, you need to be careful, ensure that the big value is a low corruption, then you interact, of course the value will be higher, the coefficient maybe will be higher, then um, mean that you can argue that okay, low corruption interact with the better financial market development, then tend to promote your dependent. Yeah. So this is a 
uh, you can interact, no problem to interact. Yeah? Of course, just like I mentioned, when you use the interaction uh, model, you need to recompute the standard error. Then the standard error it will be more reliable, and the significance of the interaction term will be more reliable. I will send this, uh, the Bramble paper, to you so that you can share with everybody. Yeah? Uh, okay? Sure. You can use the skill. Okay, uh... Uh, I'm sorry, Prof. Uh, unfortunately, the time is up. So your session is always fascinating, and also there are more active participants here, yeah? and there are many questions uh, oh. still not answered. Oh, so but the time is up. <laughs> sorry. Maybe you can, you can, maybe just tell me. Don't worry, I can still answer. Huh? If I say they want the. For those who ask, they want to have the answer, I can still answer. No, don't worry, it's still okay. I have no class, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Unless they want. Huh? Okay. So, okay, thank you so okay, much. Okay, maybe the... Yeah, uh, the committee will save the Q&A chat and also the chat box so uh, Proplo can answer directly and send to the participants. Uh, so, this is the end of our session, Prof. I'm sorry, uh, let me conclude our today's webinar. Overall, we can see that there is no shortcut for publish in well-respected journal, but we can learn the step-by-step -step how to publish there. And as we already know, the first session talks about tips and tricks how to publish in well-respected finance journal. And for the second session is uh, the amplification skill or econometric skill. So we can boost our methodology, our skill to get a higher chance for publication. And hopefully after joining uh, this webinar session, we will have uh, higher opportunities, I think. Higher opportunities and also we can get uh, more chance to publish our paper as soon as possible. Yeah, uh, maybe that's my conclusion. Okay, uh, thanks, Proplo, for the amazing insight. And thanks to uh, all participants and panelists who are willing to join and make more uh, our agendas more festive today. And for all participants, please keep update for our faculty agendas from FABUGM. You can go to FABUGM agendas, type in Google and uh, the top. First is our faculty website. You can browse our agendas and we will have more webinar session maybe uh, next week, maybe. Okay, maybe that's enough for me. I will close the session. Thank you, Prof. Lau, for this opportunity. And thanks to all participants.